Hi, my name is Carlos Rivera. I'm the Global Product Specialist of FIFLO and today in this tips and tricks session I would like to introduce you to the new concept of FIFLO Pi HMC plugin to simulate couple hydromechanical processes in FIFLO. We basically look the effect of stresses on groundwater flows. We can describe these effects by the simple definition of Terzaghi in the 90s 23 which they say that effective stresses are a direct function of total stresses, sigma, minus pore pressure, this pore pressure being calculated all the time in FIFLO. Any change of stresses or effective stresses here will produce increasing changes of hydraulic properties like conductivity, porosity, and storage coefficient. Therefore, if we monitor changes of effective stresses, we are able to understand their effects in the groundwater flow later in the simulation. There are many cases where effective stresses are relevant for groundwater applications, hydrogeological applications, but also for geotechnical applications. Let's look at this example in Lancaster in California, where we have a continuous problem of land subsidence due to over-exploitation of groundwater. Also, this means that the well productivity will be reduced due to effects of compactation, meaning reduction of the permeability in the system. Another typical example in this is Mexico City Basin, where we have a continuous problem of lamp subsidence since the last 20-25 years in very large scales. Effective stresses are all the time relevant for drilling of tunnels, for understanding wrong stability in dams, open pink sea watering, and other geotechnical applications. But also in the cases of geothermal applications, where we have sometimes a, a strong injection of fluid in the reservoir or aquifer, which could produce some hydraulic fracturing, these mechanisms can be simulated by incorporating effective stresses in groundwater modeling. Last but not least, we have cases of large-scale glacier treats, permafrost melting, which means a change of the way being added or pressure being added on the ground surface, which will also modify the different stresses distributions and therefore hydraulic properties. How this method has been implemented in FIFLO, I will explain you in a few words now. Basically, we are looking at the concept of principal stresses in the vertical direction, and we look the isotropic elastic compressibility range. For this, we are basically following the Hooke's law of elasticity. And this allows us to represent two different cases, glanular media and fractural media. For the fractural media, we even have two possibilities. We can add a family of fractures being distributed in the porous media, or we could simulate the effect of effective stresses in individual fractions, which are represented in FIFLO through discrete feature elements. On top of that, we could also include effects of overburning on ground surface, for example, glacial retreats, but also the weights of different buildings. Our approach is much flexible, considered two other solutions currently in the market, because we operate and we add the effects of stress in multiple hydraulic properties like conductivity, porosity, and storage coefficient, and not just in one single parameter. If you'd like to get more information about this approach, I would recommend you to take a look at these different papers. For simplicity, let's take a look at one of the cases, the granular media. Here you can see our stress model, which has a direct connection with the porosity, phi. Porosity depends on effective stresses, and there is also a significant parameter called Glenn's closure limit, which is a stress factor as well, and this is related to the elastic modules of the medium and the porosity. Looking in the charts, you can see the connection between porosity and effective stresses. Obviously, every time that we add the system to more stresses, the porosity tends to, be, tends to close, and therefore there will be also a reduction of hydraulic conductivity as a function of effective stresses. Knowing this information, we can parameterize using the well-known conseni karman equation to define values of conductivity and storage coefficient. Knowing the information now of conductivity and storage coefficient, in a second step, we are able to solve the flow problem using this relationship. So we are coupling here equations, especially also if we would like to add overbounding effects. 
the plugin requires some initial inputs. The main input is the total stress definition, which is very easily estimated depending on the rock densities. You have the help of the FIFLO expression editor to easily calculate the total stresses as a function of the nodal depth and rock density. This rock density obviously can vary in a space if you like. The hydromechanical plugin comes with a simple and easy to use graphical interface. The plugin is for free and comes together with your FIFLO 7.4 license. In terms of input, we require some definitions of stresses, total stresses. This is a de nodal distribution in FIFLO. We require some concept of formations of faults. These are based on FIFLO elemental selections, so you are free to select what type of what part of the model will be included for the hydromechanical coupling. Saying that, this means that you are able to disconnect parts of your model and not include these ones to the coupling, accelerating the calculations, of course. You can also add specific discrete feature elements if you want to include the effect of effective stresses on these parameters. The plugin gives you some possibilities to associate selections and different parameters. So each selection can have multiple families of fractures if you go for the fractural media, or it will have a set of parameters associated to the granular media. You could add the effect of surface loads. These are defined by time series in FIFLO using the time series editor, where you can define the load in Pascal's added to different parts of the model domain. This gives you the flexibility to add effect of overbonding on space and on time. Let's demonstrate the effects of ground settlement induced by a tunnel excavation. For this demonstration, I am taking the case of the Rowley Tunnel in Switzerland, which has been used for multiple benchmarkings in our case, but in other softwares. In this example, we have a significant decrease increase of discharge is about 1000 liters per second during the drilling time. We will try to simulate this with FIFLO. We are in FIFLO and we see we have the geometry of the Royale tunnel in Switzerland. In terms of boundary conditions, we have a dam represented by a hydraulic head BC and we also have the location of the tunnel being represented by a hydraulic head BC. For simplicity reasons, we simulate this as a steady state solution. If you look carefully at the conductivity, this has a value of zero. This is because this information is not required. The conductivity will be estimated directly by the hydromechanical approach in FIFLO. One of the first things that you need to do in your model is to add an isotropy distribution to the conductivity. Just activate the auction behind the problem settings in FIFLO. Second, you require a distribution of total stresses in Pascal's. This can be easily estimated by nodal depth in FIFLO, auxiliary parameter, gravity, and rock density. A third step, you require to attach the plugin, as you can see in my plugins panel. Do a right click and go to the edit menu to open the graphical interface of this plugin. In the graphical interface, you are requested to connect multiple input values like total stress, this is the name of the distribution that we just create, surface loads, if you have any, this will be a time series in FIFLO, no stress porosity, this is not mandatory, local deformation, we represent the change of porosity in each of the simulation time steps, you need to define where this porosity, this change of local deformation can be stored in an elemental selection, and we also have a possibility to estimate compactation, consolidation in meters. Also here, you need to define where this information needs to be stored in the FIFLO. As a next step, you need to define the selections where the hydromechanical processes will happen. I have a selection called rock, and this selection, as you can see, is also exists in my selections panel and represent the entire model area. This selection is being added in the fractural media, and I have decided to include two families of fractures. Each family of fractures has multiple parameters like a person poison ratio to connect vertical and horizontal stresses, closure stress, and so on. Now I'm ready to start the simulation. I just need to press run to get the results. This is a steady state solution. It will just take one, two seconds to estimate this. Solution is ready. And what I can see if I investigate the distribution of conductivity, let's look at K1AM, 
which was originally zero, I can see that FIFLO has automatically estimated a distribution of conductivity depending on the effective stresses. The same for the vertical conductivity K3 amped. Let's look now at the distribution of consolidation. We have the distribution called consolidation in meters. We just double click and we can investigate this information. FIFLO has calculated the consolidation in each of the nodes and this depends on the distribution of effective stresses. You can do a lot of things with this information, for example, predict what will be the possible land subsidence along the simulation or in the next 20 or 25 years of model runs. We have this information available for each of the FIFLO time steps. In this case, we have only one information because we decide to run the problem as a steady state. You would like to get more tips and tricks about hydromechanical coupling, plug-in, FIFLO, Pi HMC, or other stops in FIFLO, you are more than welcome to join the FIFLO community and get access to all these tips and tricks through our FIFLO newsletters. Thank you and talk to you until the next time. Bye.